Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, we're gonna react again to Dr. Zucker Nike, this time with one of his earliest videos. Is circumcision hatna compulsory fart in Islam? By Dr. Zucker Nike. So if you've been following this channel, you know that for me personally, circumcision is a topic of confusion. I believe that God created us perfectly and therefore I am wondering why we need to change something on our body. I heard many different commentaries. I heard many different arguments, so to speak. People told me, hey, it's just like clipping nails or like shaving your head. But well, this of course not comparable because those things grow back. The foreskin does not. It would be a decision for life. It is just like a tattoo. Once the body is modified that way, you cannot go back. Therefore, I have to do my research. I have to be fully convinced if I would ever consider it for me personally and as a family father, of course, for my children as well. Now, I have to repeat, I know that this subject is not exclusive to Muslims. I know that Jews circumcise as well. And moreover, if you look into the American population of the Christians, they do circumcise as as well. In Europe, certain countries, they practice it too. Others do not. Coming from Macedonia, we do not get circumcised usually and therefore it is not something that I've been brought up with. I never had any medical issues. I always felt good about it. Therefore, I of course have to understand if this is part of the religion. Will I have to get circumcised if I revert? What will happen to my son? Etc. Etc. Alright guys, but with no further ado, let's have a look. Dr. Zakir Naik, congratulations and best of luck uh, for starting Peace TV. I request all the audience to give him a big clap. Nice. Very friendly fellow. My question is, why is it imperative to circumcise in Islam? The brother posed the question, is it imperative, is it compulsory to circumcise in Islam? Is it far? Whether it's not fard in Islam, it is a sunnah. It's sunnah te moqada, highly recommended sunnah, it is mustahab. And there I have a question already. Sunnah means the way of the Prophet. But I heard, and please correct me again if I'm wrong, that the Prophet himself was not circumcised, but that he was born circumcised. So please let me know in the comment section what is right, what is wrong here. It is mustahab in Islam to circumcise. It's not a fard. But there are various reasons for that. I being a medical doctor, we can give a talk only on why circumcision should be done, but it's a question answer time. I'll just give you a few points. Today, science tells us that if a man is circumcised, he has less chances of having carcinoma of the penis, of having cancer of the penis. Right. Less chances. Negligible chances. If you're not circumcised, there are chances. There are various diseases which can be prevented if a man is circumcised. In circumcision, we cut the prepuce, the foreskin of the organ, of the penis. And here, we realize that where a normal person goes for the call of nature, when he after urinates, there are droplets of the urine remaining in the prepuce, in the foreskin. This causes various diseases. It can cause... That depends on the foreskin. Being a sportsman myself, I've been in locker rooms and I would fully agree. Yes, sometimes you see people with absolutely outrageous foreskins and I could believe that there would be droplets of urine in there. For those people, I would definitely recommend to get circumcised, but not everybody has a long foreskin. So I do not want to get into too much details here, but I personally do not have those issues. Itching, it can cause inflammation of the skin. It can cause pepticide many things so all the diseases are prevented if you are circumcised and beyond that when we go for the call of nature we even put water which prevents it further a person today science tells us he enjoys his sexual life more if he circumcised than not circumcised Furthermore, I cannot believe that personally. Of course, I can speak only from my own personal experience and I haven't been circumcised, but I can attest that the foreskin itself does add to the pleasure sexually. That is for sure. So removing it, I can only imagine that a man would probably last a little bit longer, but the feeling itself with or without foreskin, I would have to assume that with the foreskin, you experience more sexual pleasure. 
the chances of various other irritation of the skin is not there if you are circumcised. Today, latest research tells us that a man who circumcised has less chance of having AIDS. The virus of AIDS can spread faster. Yeah, that could definitely be. I wouldn't argue against that. But what I would have to argue for is, of course, marital sex. So we do see that such diseases are spread amongst people that have casual sex, or homosexual encounters. And therefore, if you get a virgin, for example, as a wife, you shouldn't have any worries about AIDS in the first place. Not circumcised. There are various lists of diseases which are prevented. That's the reason today in America, more than 50% of the boys after they're born, they're circumcised. They're yeah, yeah. Muslim. For sure. Even the Christians in America, yes. the doctor asks the parents, do you want your son to be circumcised? And more than 50% of them are circumcised, not because Islam says that, because they know it is a benefit for the son. Hope that answers the question. Alright guys, and this is already it for this video. Unfortunately, Dr. Zucker Naik expectedly here gave a medical explanation, but I was hoping for a religious explanation because ultimately we can find many benefits in all kinds of things, but religiously we should still abstain from them. For example, with alcohol. Alcohol has admittedly a small benefit, it says in the Quran, but the downside outweighs that benefit. And therefore, I would have liked to hear a theory theological explanation from Dr. Zucker Naik. If you have any other good videos regarding circumcision, please let me know in the comment section. I would really love to watch them. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. If you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. And yet again, let me know in the comment section what you think about circumcision. Are you circumcised or not? All right, but this is it. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.